so we want to tell you everything we know all about spacesuits because they truly are incredible. Absolutely. So we're going to start off with a little interactive part. Why do we need a spacesuit? You guys are smart. Come on. Well, I support, but more specific. To breathe. So we need some oxygen, right? Kind of important for human. We need to be able to breathe. Why else? Protection from like air pressure. I heard heat. Radiation. Thermal control. I like that. It's hot in space, it's cold in space, we want to keep them comfortable. You guys got the big ones? Um, so the, the space suit is like our own little human-shaped vehicle. It protects the astronaut while they're out in space because of all of those things that you said when you've been the one that here, but you were thinking them in your mind. Um, and so we're going to talk to you, kind of talk to bottom why the, app, the space suit does all those things that we need it to do. So Mallory mentioned thermal control, and I heard some of you guys saying that. That was great, good answer. So when you're orbiting the planet, our planet Earth, you're going about 17,500 miles per second. So in a snap of the fingers, that's five miles, which means that it takes about 90 minutes or an hour and a half to do one full orbital rotation. During that 90 minute duration, you're going to see about 45 minutes of the sunny side of the planet. What do you think, hot or cold on that side? Very good. It's not cold on the sunny side. <laughs> it's cold on the dark side. So our materials that we have in the spacesuit are specially designed to protect the human inside from those thermal extremes. But on the inside, the astronaut is working pretty hard, doing things like constructing or maintaining our space station, pretty important things. And as you're working and maintaining our space station, you're going to be building up your metabolic rate. Your heart's going to be faster, partially because you're really excited to see the Earth passing by and beneath you, but also because you're doing the incredible work for our NASA mission. So what Valerie has here is our liquid cooling and ventilation garment. We love to put you in tight spandex. And so this is your undergarment. You wear it over your own personal undergarments. And you can see that there's tubing running through the garment. And through that tubing, we run nice cold water. Very, very refreshing. The astronaut can maintain or regulate the temperature going through that garment using the front of their spacesuit displays, which is the temperature control valve right here. We do not have hot water in the suit. We only have cold water. But the great thing about this is it's true heat transfer at its best. As you're building up metabolic heat, you're heating up the water running through the garments. And so if you're getting colder and colder, you can actually turn this valve down and just recirculate the water going through the garments so that you're heating it up. Heat transfer, gotta love it. Then if you get a little too hot, you can turn the valve the other direction and you can start pulling from the water tank inside your life support system, getting nice, cold, refreshing water. Um, next we have the communication carrier assembly. This is how they talk to each other. Um, they can talk to the other crew member that's out on the EVA with them, the crew members that are back inside the vehicle, inside the station or the shuttle, and they can also talk to mission control down in Houston. Um, it's, again, you put them in tight spandex and a really attractive hat that fits right over their head. A little hat there, but that's okay. Um, it's got two independent earphones on both sides. Um, they're kind of old school, they fit right over your ear. And then two independent microphones that go right up against your mouth like a rock star. Over the communication carrier assembly is the helmet, um, and this protects the astronaut's head, obviously, because it holds everything in together. It's got two layers of plastic, um, but when you're on the 45 minutes of sun side, sometimes you need, it's too bright, so you can put down your spacesuit sunglasses um, and, and shield the sun, just like we do here on Earth. Then if it's really bright, you can pull down these visors, and then it, that completely blocks out the sun, just like if you're driving in the car, um, you want to completely block out the sun. So the part of the spacesuit that you can't see, but it is truly the keystone or center piece of our puzzle that is a spacesuit, is the part of her torso. And it goes from the neck ring that you see here down to the uh, waist ring right here. And it is truly the puzzle piece. We connect every piece of the suit to it. Our spacesuit design is very, very modular. We can size the suit to fit about 50 to 90, 50 percentile human beings. That's a large variety of all shapes and sizes, just about. And so we connect that part of her torso to the various pieces of the suit so that the suit stays together as a good, robust, reliable system. Um, on top of, uh, on the front of the part of her torso is the display and control module, and this is how you display, we display information and control things. It's kind of, we like to put it right there in the title for you. And so you can control the pressure, um, like Heather said earlier, the temperature, the water running through your liquid cooling garment, the volume of your communication carrier assembly, all of your, everything you need is right there in easy access. And then on the back of the part of the torso is, of course, what I would personally say is the most important part of the spacesuit, because it's your life support. That's the number one reason. The number two reason, though, is because that's the part that we work on, so we like it. So the life support system is, it's about two-thirds the weight of the suit. The suit fully loaded with all of the consumables is approximately 300 pounds. So you 
better start working out. And um, it has all of your primary and secondary life support for the oxygen. So primary life support is pressurizing the suit, giving you that nice oxygen that we need to breathe. Secondary oxygen, in case something goes wrong with the suit, we have high pressure oxygen that will flood the suit and keep you alive for about 30 minutes. And then of course your cooling armor for the liquid cooling garment, your battery power, your communications, everything you need to survive during your spacewalk, which typically lasts anywhere from six to seven to eight hours, depending on what we're doing. This particular mission, our four spacewalks will range about six hours to six and a half. Um, moving on down, we've got the gloves. The gloves are pretty important. Next to the life support key, which is keeping you alive, the gloves are the next most important piece because the astronauts are doing most everything with their hands. Um, they don't, we call it a space walk, but they're not really walking. And so they're doing everything with their hands. Their hands are like their hands and their feet for the mission. Um, and so the gloves, what goes over the hands, has to fit really well. And so we do lots of different glove fit checks. Um, and so this is the inner layer of the glove. This is the bladder. This is what holds the pressure. And then this goes over that, and that's the restraint layer. We like to keep it like a human-shaped balloon. Um, so you have your fingers and everything. And this is how we do a lot of the fitting. We can adjust each of the finger lengths, the width, everything, so that your glove fits just as well as we can get it um, before you go out and do all the work in space. Um, and then this is the outside layer, um, which is the thermal micrometeorite garment, um, which is what you see all over the whole space suit. Um, and this protects the astronaut's hands, obviously, from um, the temperature. Like if your the handrail, for example, is out in the sun and gets really hot, this protects the touch temperature um, so the astronaut doesn't feel that. Moving down, you have the lower torso assembly. Of course, we can just call it pants. We had to call it the LTA. But it is a pretty important part of the assembly. You have a waist bearing right here, and that's going to provide you with that twist and shout movement you see the astronauts doing during their EPAs. But the, the lower torso assembly doesn't need to provide you with a lot of mobility because even though we call it a spacewalk, you're really not walking, you're floating. So um, the best thing I can tell you about the lower torso assembly is this is one of the ways that we identify our crew members. So we're going to have Drew out in the red stripes, Mike, Mike in the white, and then Greg in the broken red and white, or what I like to call the peppermint patty, red and white stripes on the leg. So when you're watching the EVAs, as I know all of you will meticulously, all six to six and a half hours, Absolutely. every moment, all four every single moment, you guys are going to be well versed on the space suit, but you'll also know who you're watching. 